Yeah, we're going to tell him. We'll start with you. Jump in. Well, hey, Dave, um, thanks for doing this. Uh, what can you tell us about how your pitching has looked since we last talked to you and maybe tentative plans for next weekend? We've uh, we've been looking, you know, the pitchers have been looking good, obviously. We've got, we've got a lot of numbers. Um, you know, we've got a couple of guys that uh, pitched on the weekend, so to speak, last year, and they're available. They're healthy. Uh, they're still battling to try to get in there. We've had, uh, you know, Zeb Vermillion has thrown really well. We might give him an opportunity to start next weekend. And uh, Peyton Paulette has thrown real, real well. I think we're pretty sure, I would say as of now, unless something happens, he's going to get a start next weekend. Um, still, still got, we still have two more scrimmages this weekend. We're obviously, we're going inside. We, we had a scrimmage yesterday inside. Uh, we've got some guys that are going to throw before we make that last, you know, maybe that, that last spot, uh, decision. So, uh, you know, we, we've got, we've got a really good experience in the middle of the bullpen and feel good about that. Um, and I feel like that we've got a couple of guys lined up to finish out some games for us. If we decide to uh, start per million. The last few days, I'm sure, made you real happy to have the Fowler Center. Do you anticipate having to work through through the start of the season inside? Yeah, yeah I don't feel like we're going to be outside again uh, before we head. I think the next time we'll be outside will we'll be, I guess, Thursday night when we get to practice in Arlington. And I, I guess we really won't be outside because we'll have the roof closed on us there. So let's hope they do anyway. I just want it to be a little warmer. All right. Thanks. Andrew? Yeah, Coach, uh, when we talked to you after the Fall World Series, you had said that you were maybe concerned with Connor Nolan. He, he didn't have a couple of very good outings to end it. Uh, his velocity was down. H how has he looked since coming back from the break? And uh, I know you said he's competing for what that last spot. What, but what kind of role could you foresee for him? Well, he's looking a lot better. I think he's um, his command seems better. He threw pretty well his last outing. Um, if he's not starting, I could see him in a long relief role. Uh, so, uh, you know, he's, he has experience. He's got good stuff, and uh, I think he's bouncing back. Curtis. Hey, Coach, moving over to the lineup, are you feeling pretty comfortable about how you're going to fill out that lineup card on opening day, or do you still have a, a position battle or two that you're trying to decide on? I feel real good about our lineup right now, and I could write you one up probably pretty close to what we're going to go with. And we've been using it a lot um, in this early part of, of practice and scrimmages and uh, trying to put more of the starters on the same team just so they would get a little bit of uh, – an idea of the lineup and maybe get comfortable with it and where they're hitting in the order. Um, it's made for a couple of lopsided scrimmages, which is a good thing. If you load up eight guys on one team, maybe nine, and you have a lot of the other guys on the other team, it's it's gotten out of hand a couple of times, but there's also been a couple of pretty good games. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's a battle or two. There's a, a couple of guys, you know, maybe one out field position it's it's uh still up in the air a little bit but, but uh you know i probably have a guy that we're going to go with but we'll see how that turns out and then in the infield the kind of the same way uh we know goodhart is going to be in the lineup uh the bat has been really good defense has been okay you know still throwing issue a little bit uh so then you you, you know you take really brady slavens is, is battling for maybe a uh, spot at first base with Cullen Smith. And uh, realistically, I'd like to get both of those guys in the line, but at the same time, they both hit, hit left-handed and they hit well. Uh, they both have power. Um, you know, I can always flip Cullen over to third if, if Nesbitt is, you know, maybe uh, not hitting well. Or, but, but the defense from Nesbitt is just elite, really, at this level. So, uh, you know, he'll get the opportunity to start that first game for sure. Bob. Hey, hey Dave, how you doing? 
Good. Um, who would be the guys you'd be looking at closing? You said if, if Zeb was starting, who would you maybe look at in those closing spots? You know, probably Elijah Trest. You know, he's throwing the ball real, you know, real well right now. And um, he's a guy that I, you know, have a lot of confidence in. Spots his fastball well. He's 95, 96 miles an hour. About every pitch, the slider's better. He's got a little more depth this year. Um, he's probably the one that we probably go to right, right away. You know, you could, you know, we can close games now with maybe, maybe guys that aren't throwing the ball, you know, 95 plus, but we've got two or three more that could, um, you know, if you wanted to go with a young guy, you could put Jackson Wiggins in there. Got a really good arm up to 97, 98 miles an hour already this, uh, you know, this, I guess we'll call it winter, January, February. Um, cops could do it. I, I feel like Ramage can close out games. Uh, they've both been really, really good this year. Cops has been super good and uh, been fun to watch. You know, Cops said the other day when we talked to him, that, you know, maybe in a normal year, you'd have seven or eight, you know, key pitchers you'd probably rely on. I assume he meant SEC weekend. But he said this year he thinks there's about 15. Would, would, would you agree with that? I guess, how do you feel about your pitching depth overall? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm feeling good about our depth. I mean, he's right on the numbers. There's, there, I'm not saying that, you know, more than 15 guys are going to get to pitch all the time um, because a lot of times on the weekend, you're not going to need that many. You're probably going to need 10, you know, if you have a pretty good weekend. But uh, there's another five or six guys, seven guys probably, that we have no problem putting them in the game. And I can't say that has ever happened uh, here. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had that many pitchers that, you know, we can put out there, but I think a lot of other teams are going to have the same issues. They're going to have a lot of depth, kept guys on both ends, didn't get drafted, didn't sign either out of high school or junior college. And they ended up on campus and then keeping the older kids in the program like we did. So uh, I think you're going to see some really well pitched games this year and You'll see coaches probably going to the mound and getting guys maybe a little earlier uh, than they have in the past because they know they got enough guys to get through the weekend. Thanks, Dave. Yep. Matt. Hey, I can't remember a time when you've had to go in the Fowler Center for, for this long, this close to the season. Uh, what, what are your thoughts uh, needing to be in there, you know, for so long? And, and, and what are the, the primary limitations in there versus when you're outside? Well, my thoughts Going there, the first thought is, thank goodness we have it. Uh, we're, we're very fortunate to have this type of indoor facilities. I know that a lot of teams have indoor facilities. They're not, not as big or they have to use a, an indoor, indoor area that's used by many of the sports programs, whether it's football and soccer and you go on and on and on. I uh, would have to, you know, wait their time a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, my thoughts are is that it's, you know, but the limit, let me go back. The limitations are that your outfield doesn't get the work that it needs. Other than that, we can do most everything in there. We can play defense. We can pitch defense in the infield and uh, run the bases. We can, we can play the game. Um, you know, with some of the te technology that we have, it'll tell you how far you hit the ball and how fast it, you know, jumped off the bat. And it's, you know, it, it did. It gets a little monotonous being inside all the time, but you know, I've I've coached in in the Midwest, and uh, sometimes it's what you got to do. I just think the, the, the players are going to just appreciate it even more when we get the opportunity to be out on a on a real, you know, on a real ballpark or in a, on a in an area where you don't have to worry about the weather with that roof uh, having the opportunity to be closed. And that's one reason I you know, wanted to, to get in this tournament because I knew we were going to play unless something crazy happens. I wanted to go back to what you said about Goodhart a minute ago. It, it sounds like, are you thinking about him at DH that first weekend? Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking about it. Um, I think he, you know, that's, that's where he, that's where he has been for us. Um, he's gotten a lot better in the field um, just that the arms up and down and uh, you know, we'll see how that ends up though. Uh, hey, Coach, I was looking back at that statement uh, you issued almost uh, like 11 months ago to the day, and you said you were devastated for your team when the season ended so suddenly. You know, do you find yourself kind of thinking back to that as you 
get going here. And I know it's cliche, but gosh, kind of an appreciation for, for getting back out there when you think about that. Yeah, I, I've seen it in the, in the players' faces that, I mean, I saw it all fall. They just really appreciated the opportunity to be out there. You know, something's taken away from them. Uh, you know, just to get, be able to get it back and, and have the opportunity to play. And, uh, you know, it was a tough time for everybody because it just was, it just kind of happened. It happened so fast and, you know, you work hard to prepare and bang, it's over. And, uh, you know, obviously I didn't get it. No one got a chance to see what, you know, like Heston Kirstad, what type of year he was going to have, or Casey Martin, some of these guys, um, cause they were, they were going to do some things. So, uh, I think our guys are just super excited to get this regular season going and, I think it'll make, make them feel a little more normal than we have for the last 10 or 11 months. Kevin. Hey coach, if the situation allows itself, with this being an athletic lineup, do you anticipate more stolen bases in the running game this year? I think what I've told the players, we're going to, we're going to run when the other team's not paying attention and you know, there's some guys that can steal in your face when the other team knows you're going to steal and they're working quick to the plate, catchers on high alert. Uh, you know, we've got a guy or two that can do that, but we've got some other guys that, you know, if the other team gets their guard down or they're slow to the plate or, like I said, they're not paying attention, uh, we'll, we'll try to take advantage of that. I mean, are we going to steal 100-plus? We could. Uh, you know, we, have, we do have some athletes, some athletic guys that can run, uh, but – you know, we have some athletic kids that can hit the ball out of the park as well and hit doubles. So I don't want to run us out of games or innings. Um, uh, it just has to be right. And, uh, but, but I, I guess to answer your question, yeah, I, I think that we will we'll probably run a little more than we have in the past uh, if the situation's the right situation. You know, last year with the pop and maybe the, the year before and the year before we didn't need to run uh, because I thought maybe there was, there was a better chance hitting a home run or a double than there would be, uh, you know, to try to steal that bag. So you just, we just have to try to play it smart. Clay. Uh, Coach, you talked a lot and so has Coach Hobbs about the velocity of these guys. How have they been, uh, the staff, on throwing strikes and pitchability? Yeah, we have we have a lot of strike throwers. And, and you know, I, I love velocity. Why wouldn't you? Because it just makes all your other pitches better. They, they have to kind of cheat to get to the fastball. But I like guys who get people out. And I think anybody that's watched the game and been around this game knows that it, you've, you've got to make the other team swing the bat. And... Um, but we have a lot of kids with pitch ability and that's, that's a good baseball term there. I, I'm proud of you for that clay. And, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's something we use here a lot. So, uh, but we do have a lot of strike throwers, the guy that we can put out there and they can pitch. And, you know, some of the older guys, we've seen them do it a lot more than others. Example, you know, I guess when you say pitch ability, Ramage has a lot of pitch ability to me. He's a strike thrower and ball moves. We know what we're getting when we put him out on the mound. And, you, and Paulette is kind of the same guy. He's got a really good arm, but he, he throws it over the plate. You're going to have to swing. And, uh, uh, you know, that's that's a big part of getting people out is, know, you know, them knowing that uh, you got three pitches you can throw around the plate. They're, you know, it's just, it's just such an advantage. But we also have guys who can go out there and throw it right by you as well. Phil. Phil. Hey, Coach, uh, I saw where college baseball is going to do the same thing that international baseball does and that the majors did last year with extra inning games by placing a runner at second base to start the 10th inning. And I know you've coached in that sort of game before as the USA baseball head coach. How does that change any strategy that you might utilize 10th inning and on? Well, the way that works is that, that we have the option to do that. We have to agree on that. Okay. And I know in the SEC – we won't agree on that. We're going to play regular baseball unless uh, there's a, a getaway time, you know, maybe uh, charter plane or a, let's say commercial flight situation. Um, 
I think that's when that will be agreed on before the game uh, because of, of a time limit or something. But uh, yeah, some leagues may just say, hey, that's what we're going to do. I know in the SEC, we've said we have the option to do it now. So uh, it's very interesting. I mean, you put the last, whoever made the last out, say in the ninth, out there to you put them at second base and uh, you got to figure out if you just want to hit, you want to bunt, what do you want to do? And, uh, you know, I, I guess it, uh, there still will be some strategy because you don't go to the top of the order. It, I mean, if, if my two all hitter made the last out and he goes to second base and I got three, four and five, I'm going to swing. If, mm-hmm. if the other team's got number eight, nine, one coming up, Maybe I just try to punch one in, you know, I mean, there, you have to think about it a little bit, but uh, uh, I think it's a good option. I'm, but I think it's, I not only think I just, I like regular baseball, I guess. I, I only would really want to do it if kind of had to. Last thing I had to ask about, and it's going to be so neat opening up the season in the home of the Texas Rangers where the world series was played last year. Well, what do you know about how that park plays? I remember major league players saying that it was really cavernous and home runs were a little tough to come by. What do, what do you know about Globe Life Field? Yeah, I've been told, looked around or, or made a couple of calls and talked to a couple of people that have been there that just said that, uh, yeah, the center field's deep. Um, you got to hit it pretty good to get it out in the alleys. You can get it out down the lines. It's a really nice ballpark. Heard a lot of great things about it. And you know, we'll have the opportunity to practice down there for a good hour plus, and uh, we'll, we'll get a good feel for it, you know, the, the dirt and the surface, because, you know, what I've been told is they, they have dirt, but they also have, you know, field turf. Uh, it's a, a kind of a different kind, and I'm, I'm really interested to see it, see how it plays, uh, but also for our outfielders to see how the ball travels and um, you know, you try to learn as much as you can and everybody's in the same boat. So, uh, but we're just extremely excited to get out of here and go play. Got time for a couple more questions. We'll swing around to Andrew to start. Yeah, Dave, I was wondering a couple of times I've been out there during this preseason, Brady uh, Slavens has, has looked okay at, at first base. How would you assess him defensively out there at first? I think he's getting better. He had a really good day yesterday. I even commented to the team. He, he made a couple of nice plays and made a nice play on a throw that was into the runner and he caught the ball and he used every bit of his, his, his height and his long arms to make that play over a runner. Um, uh, you know, it's, when you kind of compare him to, to Smith or even Goodhart is Smith is an experienced defender. He played third base every day as a freshman at, uh, you know, I think it was uh, East, was it East Tennessee? And then, uh, then he played second base. So he's obviously he's a good fielder. Um, Brady's played a little bit of everywhere, you know, in his baseball career from little league shortstop to a third baseman to a right fielder. So, uh, but he's, he hasn't played a lot of first. He's played more second than he has first. So, uh, but he's getting better. And that's, you know, that's all you can ask is for a guy to work and, and try to get better. And then also on his defense, uh, you know, as far as the defensive thing is that, you know, he, he was trying to win that third base job. We were trying to give him every opportunity to play over there or maybe even the second. And uh, so now he's working full time at first. And so I've seen him getting better day to day. And, you know, like I said, if you got maybe a nine or 10 hitter, say 10 hitters, you want to get in the lineup, you can't play them all. And so somebody's not going to get to play. It's like I tell the guys, it's a long season. You're all going to get to play and the, you know, so to speak, the cream's going to rise at the top anyway. We'll figure it out. And then Dylan Leach was a guy that you said impressed you during the fall until he had a little bit of an injury. How, how's his arm doing? And, and would you say he's your backup catcher behind Opitz? Yeah, his arm's 100%, throwing the ball really well, throwing out some, some pretty good runners uh, that have tried to run on him um, so far this year. And, uh, yeah, I would say he's our, he's our backup catcher right now. Tom. Tom. Dave, do you like opening against this caliber of competition right out of the gate? And what, what do you need to do better than you did in the Texas games last year? Yeah, you know, last year we we played at home and got off to a good start. Um, and we got down there, and honestly, we faced some pretty good pitchers here. We faced a young man, I think, went in the second or third round. 
maybe even a fifth rounder. But uh, when we got down there, I mean, we faced a first rounder and we actually had the lead when, when Oklahoma took him out. And then, you know, we let it, we let it slip away. We made some mistakes and got beat a couple runs. And then the Texas game, you know, game two, I mean, they got out on us. We, we had a disastrous second inning. I think they got out on us a couple of, of quick runs off of Wicklander. who did not throw good. He didn't get out of the second inning. I think he only got three outs in the game. And, you know, we threw the ball around. Left fielder threw the ball over the cutoff man's head, and it goes over to the bullpen. And, I mean, it wasn't good. It wasn't pretty. Uh, but we came fighting back and came within about six inches of tying the game up when Goodhart hit the ball off the yellow line. And we ran out of time. You know, we lose eight, seven, nine, eight, whatever it was. Um, and then gets Baylor in game three. I mean, we forgot to show up. Game was late. Maybe we were still feeling sorry for ourselves or what, but that was the most frustrating game for me personally is that I just feel like we didn't show up. Baylor played really well, beat us three to two, and we limped on out of there, and uh, we got it together after that. So I guess to answer your question, what do we have to do better? We just need to play better. We just need to play solid baseball. I mean, you got six teams ranked in the in the top ten in the D1 poll. Uh, that's six pretty good teams right out of the shoot, and if you – They'll expose you pretty quick and you can find out what you need to work on. I mean, you know, I remember one year we went to Houston and we lost all three games down there. We went to Omaha. And I remember one year we went down there to the Minute Maid Classic. We won all three games and we didn't do anything. So uh, sometimes you, you just have to go down there, try to get better um, and figure out really what your weaknesses are. And when you play good teams, they'll expose them. Final two questions here. We'll start with Bob and then we can go to Matt. Hey, Dave, I was wondering if you'd talk to Ben Intendi since he got traded and just what you thought about that. Maybe that'll be a good uh, change of scenery for him after a, a tough season last year. Yeah, I talked to Andrew uh, the next day in the morning and then in the afternoon we talked and through texting, different things. And uh, He's excited to, to get back to the Midwest. I mean, that was kind of his words. It, it feels like it'd be a good fit for him. Uh, I've talked to the Royals about him before it all went down. Um, I think with Gordon retiring, he's going to be a great fit in left field for them and um, probably more of a top of the order hitter. And hopefully in, in the ballpark at, in, in Kansas City, he'll kind of go back to what, what he really is. And that's a line drive guy that sprays it all over the field. and. Um, I, I hope it turns out really well for everybody involved. Thanks, Dave. Matt, finish us off. Thanks. Bob took half of my question. Uh, the, the other half, Dave, was uh, how does it help you recruiting Kansas City, do you think, having someone of that caliber uh, playing for the Royals? I think it'll it's, – it's definitely going to help some. You know, we've done an extremely good job in Kansas City the last 10 years – you go back to Ryan Stanick and all the way to Christian Franklin, and we've got three or four kids coming in this year that are from the area, and then the next two or three classes down the road, we've already got a couple kids committed in each class, and we're working on a couple more. Um, but, but having a, a former Arkansas Razorback Golden Spike winner uh, playing, you know, three and a half, four hours right up the road from us, um, I think it, it should help us. And I'm sure it'll get brought up in the media up there that he was a Razorback and maybe that, uh, you know, the, the GM of, of, of the Royals, son's playing for the Razorbacks now and will be playing for us next year. It's going to be a good pick out of here down the road uh, because he deserves it. Um, it'll probably all tie in. Thanks for the time, Coach.